Hi, I'm Mac McCarthy, and I help people with their breakups. And today, I'm going to share a couple of my own stories about the no contact rule. And it's two sides of the coin. One, one story is going to show how the no contact rule worked. I guess in my favor, but I wasn't trying was a big part of it. And one time when I broke the no contact rule, and it crushed me. So, <clears throat> starting out, uh, the first time I used the no contact rule, I didn't really know what I was doing. It wasn't like I was on the internet or someone told me. I, I just felt like it was the right thing to do at the time. So at the time, I was, this is when I was 22, about 14 years ago, I'm 36 years old. Um, 14, yeah, 14 or, I was 21 or 22, okay, 14 or 15 years ago, long time ago, when he's, shit man, when you talk about it, it makes it, makes it seem so long ago, so, I was uh, seeing this girl for about three and a half, four months, but it got to a point where it was going to be my girlfriend probably pretty soon, and I had to move away to go to school in Southern California, so, moved away, I made that decision, course for the next three or four months we saw each other you know once a month or twice a month talked on the phone quite regularly like a long distance relationship but we kind of weren't like boyfriend and girlfriend we I kind of kept the the door open for, away from that anyways she got to a point where she went you know what I'm done she didn't make a big deal out of it but she's like I can't contact you anymore she stopped responding to a couple calls she had told me she warned me and I respected it I just went you know what I'm a young guy I'm all right I totally understand where she's coming from, and I respect it. And I didn't contact her anymore. And part of it is, you know, we we had a long distance relationship for three or four months, and then prior to that, it was only three or four months. So to get over something like that takes a lot less time than if you are in a four or five year, ten year relationship. Totally get that, especially if you're living together. When you live together, that's a whole other ball game of connection and how close you are. So I I, I get that, but I'm just saying, in retrospect, looking at it. This is the way the no contact rule works in your favor is when you just let go and have no expectation. And I didn't. So, I mean, you know, down down the road a few, couple times, a few times I, I missed her and I thought she was a good catch. She was a good looking girl, you know, treated me great. And I didn't meet another girl like that for the next year. Okay. So, yeah, it was a loss, but I wasn't dwelling on it. I didn't call her up. You know, I respected where she was at. I figured she's probably seeing someone else probably, you know. So, and I wasn't planning on moving back home, uh, you know, my hometown where she lived. So, about 10 months or a year later, I get a call out of the blue, and it's her. And she just said that she saw some guy at a coffee shop that reminded her, reminded her of me, reminded her of me, no, reminded her of me, yeah. <laughs> So we just got to talking and it just, it was just like, we talked for an hour and we just talked about work and school and just, you know, it wasn't like, oh, when can I see you again? I miss you so much. And we had such great times. It was just, it was just checking in. We hadn't talked in a long while. There wasn't a lot of expectation to it. And about three weeks or a month later, when I was back in town, we hooked up, we got together. And from then on, we started a long distance thing again and it really worked out and ended up being my girlfriend for a few years. But my point is, I'm looking at this no contact thing, and I just, I didn't, I, I just treated it like it was over. And then she came back. Now, had I been calling her over and over again when she first said, like, you know what, I got to be done with this. I want to break this off. Uh, she wouldn't have called me eight or nine months later or ten months later if I would have broke that no contact. But she really was wondering about me. What is he up to? What is he up to? You know, and and she had to chase me. She had to come to me. And and then I was in the driver's seat as far as. The relationship now if i would have you know just been sending her little messages here and there checking in she didn't know she always had me on the hook when she called me that day she wasn't desperate or anything but she was damn curious what's going on right so that was the time it worked without me really trying to use it so about 10 years ago i had the worst breakup i've ever had in my life i haven't had a lot of breakups but this was probably one of the reasons why i've become a breakup coach and you know, 
sought out a ton of material on love and relationships because I never wanted to feel that way again. And uh, basically, we were in a five-year relationship or a little under five years, and we lived together for most of that time. We were very close, and relationship went bad the last six months. I gave an ultimatum as far as her her drinking and going out with friends, and she didn't take the ultimatum. She went the other way, to my surprise, and it ended a bit nasty. It did end a bit nasty because um, I didn't handle it well. I didn't handle it well at all, and I was upset, and I felt rejected. And uh, from that point on, I had a feeling like, oh, she'll maybe she'll come back. She'll come back, but it was it was tough. It was it was it was probably the lowest I felt in my life at that point. So, I mean, literally, just cold air is being pumped in my heart. I'm laughing about it now, but it wasn't funny at the time, and. Um, so I talked to many friends, you know, looking for answers, this and that, and I, and I didn't see it coming. And what I mean by that, I didn't see the, the harsh feelings of a breakup coming. I really never felt that way before, that kind of loss, that sadness, that we're not going to get back together. Oh, I hope we're back together. This mouse wheel running in your fucking head all the time. What if, what if, okay? And I had a really good family member that kind of was my coach really and he had been in a very similar breakup at a similar age and kind of just you know told me to call him anytime and immediately told me to go into no contact for the benefits I've described before to get over the situation and if she's ever going to call you back it's going to be after you've had no contact with her she's got to miss you she's got to appreciate you and she's got to feel like she you know wants especially in the situation I had with the ultimatum and whatnot and her who who she was becoming at the time, but that's for another video, right? So I go into the no contact for, I think it was about three and a half weeks, something like that. I don't think it was a month yet. And I had friends telling me, good, a couple of my good buddies, oh, just, you know, call her up. You're nuts. You know, I wear my heart on my sleeve, man. I would, I, th I don't understand why you're doing this. I'm like, I can't, I know it's not gonna work. Another friend's like, oh, I'd go over there with flowers, take her out to dinner. I'm like, I know that's not gonna work with, my girlfriend and our relationship. I, you know, everyone has their own relationship. That wasn't going to work. I knew that. I said, no, 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 I can't. I can't. So I kept it. And then I had a, um, I was working in real estate at the time and I had uh, a mentor who I really looked up to. And, and he wasn't my boss, but he was a colleague, but we shared an office and we were really close. And he was in his late 40s, been around the block, had a lot of life experience, smart guy. And he just told me, he's like, at lunch, he's like, I can tell you're hurt, man. He goes, don't leave any doors, you know, unopened. Take your shot now. I mean, your, your attitude of not, you know, talking to her about this and, and hurting like this, I, I think you're doing the wrong thing. And I just went, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. After that lunch, I go and send an email. <laughs> Again, I'm laughing, but this wasn't fun at the time. I'm so proud of myself that I can laugh at this now. And I hope any of you out there are hurting right now that, realize you can get through this like you can get through to the other end you can get over the mountain it, it, it'll come it'll come but it, to hurt it's natural so i sent an email i said uh can we can you get a coffee just something so weak i haven't contacted her in three and a half weeks we ended in a little bit of a you know bitter thing i told her to get her shit out of the house whatnot and i send her the message yeah did you want to get a coffee in an email Oh, God. And this is 10 years ago, so it wasn't smartphones, right? It was an email. So um, I'm waiting for the email. I'm checking my email every 30 minutes. And I know she checks her email for work quite regularly. Doesn't respond all day. I'm finally, like, at 4.30. Uh, it comes through. I'm at my friend's house. I go upstairs. I remember this vividly. I said, hey, hey bud, can I use your, you know, check my email? I go upstairs, check the email. She writes... I'm so happy right now. I've never been happier. I think it would be really awkward if we met for coffee. Crushed me. Absolutely crushed me. Took me to ground zero and lower. I mean, I couldn't believe she would say that. And I just reacted like, oh, I'm going out of town anyways. Just something weak and a lie. But I mean, my point is, looking back, I didn't. I wouldn't have been able to go to that coffee meeting if she was 
going to be cold or really in a good mood. Because I was thinking Hollywood ending, where she begs for me to come back and has missed me so much. And she wasn't feeling that. And she was being honest. And I know her. She was being honest. The fact that she threw in that she was so happy, that was mean. That was rotten. But I, looking back, I said some nasty things in the last few days we were together. And she was getting me back. My buddy told me afterwards, he goes, she's trying to hurt you by saying that. She could have just said, oh, I don't have the time or anything like that. She was being dead honest. But to say she was really happy, she was trying to hurt me. And I said some hurtful things to her. And people mirror people. They want Revenge is a natural human state. It's not nice, but that's what she was, that's what she was getting at. So I'm saying in your situation, when you're doing this no contact... When you're doing this no contact thing and you feel like you want to contact that person for their birthday or some kind of reason or like I did for coffee, you know, like that's, you know, that's an innocent kind of thing. Yeah, it is on the, on the exterior, on the shell, but really what is your intention? Like my intention was hoping that she'd want to get back together. She'd be sorry and she'd, she'd be that person she was, you know, three years ago or two years ago that we had this wonderful relationship, but not the person that she's been the last six months that we're really working along. I wasn't being realistic about it, right? And the fact that she threw in a little, little jab, just a little fucking gut punch, I'm so happy right now. It'd be really awkward. That can happen. And like I said, when you get that, I went all the way back to the first few days and worse, it was like it was just getting re rejected double time. So, if you are prepared to deal with that, then fine, send the message. But if you're not prepared to deal with that, if you're not prepared for the idea that you might get rejected or you might get a cold message or you might not get a response, and it, and it's most likely going to hurt you worse. Some people say, "Oh, well, you got to feel that pain." Yeah, you can make that argument. But I'll tell you what, I didn't, I, I didn't feel like it was necessary. And, and like I said, looking back in retrospect, I wasn't ready to meet her. I wasn't ready to meet her. I was carrying a lot of ill feelings and I was really upset. And that's why I said write out your story because you get your whole story out. And when I finally wrote out mine and then you kind of look at it, look at it again. And even if you go to my website and read some other people's stories, maybe those stories don't relate, but just realizing how many different angles a breakup comes from and and how are you judging your breakup like when I, when I look at my breakup now that breakup I see everything I did wrong she did wrong and then it was just time it was time I mean it's it was absolutely the right time to break up it what we we couldn't carry on the way we were and I was holding on to the relationship that was there a year before the problems I was holding on to that relationship that wasn't there anymore and the no contact thing what you're doing is you're saying hey look the i'm hoping that you if you're if you're hoping that they come back that's needy if you're saying i'm moving on with my life and if you came back i'll make that decision at that time and hopefully you made the changes that would make our relationship better and i've made some changes i've taken some inventory on what you know because both sides usually have some problems so I hope that I hope that helps you if you're really battling, if you're really fucking battling with staying in the no contact. I mean, like that story I just gave you about getting coffee. I look back, I have no regrets. No regrets because I learned from it. I'll never do it again. If that situation came up again, I know how to handle it. I wouldn't if I had to break up again and I had to put myself in that shoes again, I would never do that. I would never put myself in that. And I look back now and if I wanted to meet that ex-girlfriend who I haven't seen since, yeah, 10 years ago or whatever, it would be on the stance that, hey, how you been? No, no intention of getting back together. No, oh, I hope I impress you in some way. That's another thing. You want to make them jealous or you want to hurt them in some way. Don't do that. You're just hurting yourself. If you just really genuinely want to say, Happy birthday. Hope you've been well. That'll show. And that's fine. That's fine. As long as you don't have those hopeful, wishful, testing the water feelings. Because if you get nailed from that, and most likely you will, that, like I said, it just brings you that much farther down. It really does. Hope that helps you out there. Like.